What's up, wrestling fans? I'm Scott Casper alongside Tony Hager. Welcome to this week's edition of GWN. Well, it came down to the wire, but the All-Star Classic card has been finalized and we're ready to kick off the collegiate season. Just added to the lineup at 125, a match between Missouri junior Barlow McGee and Campbell standout Nathan Crazier. McGee fell just short of All-American status just last year, finishing 24-9, with a Mid-American Conference Championship. Kreiser, meanwhile, spent two years at North Carolina before transferring to Campbell, where he won the Southern Conference Championship as a junior at 133. So let's play a little pick em here, Tony. Who do you like? I like an upset here. Kreiser puts up bonus points. He's got a, a two years under Colot. I feel like that's going to do a lot of wonders for him. Had this mind, and when you're transferring, it's, it's very difficult. There's lots of outside factors. So Colot, two years under his belt. I feel like he's going to get the upset here. Tony, there's a little-known fact about the club aspect of Crazer benefiting from Colat. So I think that brings a lot to the table. What about Barlow McGee? Yeah, I, I like McGee. It probably would take McGee if it was later on in the season against Crazer. My intel says that Crazer's ready to go. He's healthy at 125, feels good. I like him a lot for some reason. I just I just have a good feeling about him. Let's go to 133, a battle between two of the best in the Big Ten. Illinois' Zane Richards takes on Nebraska's Eric Montoya. I think we're going to be surprised by Montoya, but I like Richards overall to win the bout. I like Richards to win the Big Ten. I'm going to take a step further. I pick Zane Richards to win an NCAA championship. How the Big Ten is absolutely loaded at 133 pounds. Clark is still my guy, though. Picked him last week. But in regards to this match, Richards is 3-1 and one against Montoya. I'm picking Richards to pick up the win here. Montoya didn't wrestle very smart in the Big Ten Championship, so if he doesn't make bad decisions from his feet, he, he'll have a shot, but Richards out-wrestled him at the Big Ten. Got to clean up his attacks, that's for sure. We go to 141. Two-time All-American Anthony Ashnault will face returning NCAA runner-up Bryce Meredith. Ashnault is the reigning Big Ten champ and the school's first national semifinalist since 1960. Meredith reached the title round in New York City, if you recall, with victories over Kevin Jack, Micah Jordan, and Joey McKenna before falling to the champ, Dean Heil. I'll let you take this one first, Tony. This is uh, all about Bryce Meredith. I talked to him yesterday. He has a ton of confidence going into this season. Doesn't want to be known as the Cinderella story. He's writing his script at the NWCA Classic. He wants to be a favorite going into the season. I mean, I'm going to take Ashnault here. I wouldn't be shocked to see Anthony win an NCAA title this year. He's already got the Big Ten Championship, which is probably just as difficult. Yeah. Ashnault had a, had a great national championships. You know, both are carrying a, a lot of momentum into this season. This comes down to who's in the best shape. It's not about skill, I don't think. Who's in the best shape this early in the season? Who put in that off-season work? So I think it will come down to that third period. Let's talk about a rematch from the 2016 Finals. Missouri All-American LaVon Mays will take on Oklahoma State Cowboy Anthony Kalika. It was Kalika who bounced Mays from the championship side of the bracket in New York with a 3-2 victory in the quarters, but Mays would avenge the loss just one day later when he edged out Kalika by the very same score in the third place bout. Seventh career meeting, Tony, tied three wins each. Who you got? Mays is relentless from, uh, from his feet. His attacks are relentless. I'm looking for him to push the pace early. Last year at the grapple at the gridiron, the Cowboys weren't in shape at all against the Iowa Hawkeyes. So look for maybe a similar thing unless the coaches at Oklahoma State got him in shape this year. So I look for him to push the pace and tire out Kalika. You know, I don't think there's a wrong answer here. These guys are so evenly matched, they could probably wrestle 100 times and still split victories. So it's going to be who wins on that particular day. NC State senior Max Roscoff will make his 157-pound debut against Michigan's Brian Murphy. Roscoff finished last year with a record of 16-4 and four and a seventh-place finish at 165. While Murphy nearly reached All-America status for the second time, it came up one bout short against Roscoff's teammate Tommy Gant. Yeah, Roshkoff, he's coming down from 65 down to 57. If he has handled this weight cut really well, if he's he's managed it, he's your winner. Way more aggressive on his feet than Murphy. Murphy is more of a defensive wrestler, picks his shots. I think uh, this will be an early matchup win that Murphy is not going to be able to be able to keep up with them. Stick around, wrestling fans. We'll take you from 165 to heavyweight in our review of the All-Star Classic. This portion of GWN brought to you by Fairway Foods.
Yellow Blue wants to show you. Global energy demands are expanding at an alarming rate. Power grids in the U.S. are aging while coal plants continue to close at record rates. Utility rates are at an all-time high and there's no end in sight. If this concerns you, call Yellow Blue, delivering products and services that are not only green, but cost effective. You can be independent, safe, and secure. We'll show you how at yellowbluetech.com. All right, welcome back to GWN. Our preview of the 51st edition of the All-Star Classic continues. We go to 165. That's where Wisconsin's Isaac Jordan will take on Missouri sophomore Daniel Lewis. Now, Lewis, if you recall, stormed onto the national scene as a freshman, finishing 29-6 with a Mid-American Conference championship and a fourth-place title in New York City. Jordan enters his senior year with an overall record of 86-12 and and will try to become just the fifth four-time All-American for Wisconsin. This, this could be a preview of what we right. see on Friday night down in St. Louis at the NCAA Championships. Imar more than likely will come in as the one seed. He's my guy at this weight class. But these two being on the bottom side of the back, the bracket right below him, you know, Jordan has the ability to control matches from the top position and on the mat wrestling. Obviously, he needs to get to there in order to pick up this win. But I feel like overall – a full seven mat of minutes of a match, Jordan is going to have this opportunity to get a shot, get on top, and control this match to a victory. I'm going with Lewis. I was absolutely blown away by how good this kid was as a true freshman. Jordan's not an easy guy to score on, but if anybody can do it, I think it is Daniel Lewis. Yeah. Lewis is, is not scared to attack from his feet. Very, very aggressive. If, if Jordan can really slow him down from his feet, he'll be able to control the match for that full seven minutes. But if Lewis continues to push that pace from his feet like we're known to see him as a true freshman, he'll have a good shot to pick off Jordan. All right, let's go to the bout that was just added to the card, 174 pounds, North Carolina, All-American Ethan Ramos. No relation to that other Ramos we've heard about from the University of Iowa, now at North Carolina. He'll be taking out Big Ten runner-up Zach Brunson. This one is also very evenly matched, Tony. You've got the first pick. Uh, this is this is not a real exciting match for me. Both underperformed last season, so I think uh, you know both of these guys have – the chance to take away with this match. They both equally wrestle the, the same. I think that uh, it, this is going to come down to the very first period. Who scores that first takedown from there on? They're going to control the match. I'm going to take Ethan Ramos. Here's why. I've got three reasons. Not one, not two, but three big reasons. Tony Ramos, Coleman Scott, and Kenny Monday. That's enough. Well, these, these coaches have it going on in the recruiting world. This has been a summer of all, everything about the Tar Heels. Has it taking place on the mat, though. Are they performing on the mat? We're going to see right away here at the NWCA Classic if they've got their kids ready. I've said it from the very beginning. The main event of this event will be national champ Miles Martin at 84 pounds. Matter of fact, he'll debut against two-time defending national champ Gabe Dean, two NCAA champions meeting on the mat at the All-Star. A three-time All-American, Dean has dominated over the last two seasons, going 77-3 and with 49 bonus point victories and back-to-back -back titles at 84. Meanwhile, Martin came out of redshirt midway through the year and captured his first NCAA title at 174. I mean, not a lot of people are picking Martin here, Tony, but nobody thought he would beat Bo Nickel either. Yeah, Dean just gets the job done in the big matches. And we've seen it time and time again in March. He, he just is able to get it done. I mean, I know you know 
that I like Gabe Dean, but what I like about Miles Martin is that he's a student of the sport. You hear a lot of guys say they don't care who their opponent is, but Miles Martin will study you. He's going to pick it apart. He'll find your weakness and exploit it. Well, you're talking up Martin. I mean, who, who are you going to take? Taking Martin or are you taking Dean in this match? I'm taking Gabe Dean. Well, he, he's a senior. He's who I'm taking to. All right. We go to 197, a battle of the Bretts as Minnesota All-American Brett Farr takes on Princeton's Brett Harner. Farr capped a stellar 40-4 and four year with a third-place finish at the 2016 championships, while Harner finished 36-6 and six and has become the first All-American for Princeton since 2003. I feel like both of these guys are off the radar, but highly ranked going into the season. This weight class cleared out, so both wrestlers had a great, you know, they had great seasons last year. Now it's their time. Now it's their time to make a name for themselves kind of like Bryce, Bryce Meredith this is their opportunity just to not show that you know they were they're forgotten this is their time all right this is a tough one for sure I just don't know enough about Brett Harner we did extend the invitation for him to come on the show and be interviewed if he wins this match that sleeper status is surely going to disappear very quickly see that that's crazy you said that he is sleeper status his only loss last year was to Jaden Cox and he still he got third place so the fact that people still haven't heard from him, heard of him, he's got third place. He's an All-American. It's crazy to me, but Princeton, so right here on the big stage, again, a guy that can do a lot for, for Princeton. I agree. Finally, at 285, Cleveland native Ty Walls returns home to face Wisconsin All-American Connor Medbury. Walls has been a perennial power at heavy and is coming off a personal best fourth place finish in New York. Medbury finished fourth in 2015 and took a year off to train for the Olympic trials. Should be another real close heavyweight bout. I'm picking Medbury, though. He's got that win over Waltz. He's fresh off that red shirt year, so I'm picking Medbury to pick up a big win. I like Walls because of his offense. Remember, he just ran through Adam Kuhn at this event last year, and who expected that? Yeah, no one. I, Waltz, Waltz was explosive last year, really made a name for himself last year from his feet. He just really blast doubles people. I mean, if he, if he lowers his level, he just gets those feet going. He can take down anybody in the country. All right, for the full schedule, including preliminary bouts, free clinics, and all the activities at this year's Classic, head to nwcaonline.com or allstarclassic.com. Now, tickets are still available. $15 for GA, $100 for the premium seats. It's all taking place on the campus of Cleveland State at the Wolstein Center. You can watch it live on Track Wrestling. Gary Abbott joins us live after this short time out. You're watching GWN powered by Defense Soap. Right now, get any large original or flatbread Supreme Pizza for only $13.99. Casey's, famous for pizza. At Cookies, sauces and seasonings are business, but food is our passion. Our secret ingredient is Cookies Flavor Enhancer and All-Purpose Seasoning. It makes pretty much everything taste better. You can use it on meats and in marinades, veggies and seafood. Try it on pasta and even popcorn. Pick up a bottle at your local grocer and enhance the flavor of your favorite foods. Cookies For more ideas and recipes, visit CookiesBBQ.com. All right, welcome back, wrestling fans. It is GWN. Mark this down on your calendar. November 10th, Bill Farrell International, home of the first non-Olympic world team trials that will take place in New York City, of course. Joining us today to discuss the upcoming tournament is none other than Gary Abbott with USA Wrestling. Gary, how are you? 
Doing great, Scott. How's life, man? Good to talk to you and good to see you even more so. Let's talk a little bit about what we do know, the Bill Farrell Memorial and this special event, this U.S. non-Olympic World Team Trials will take place uh, in conjunction with each other at the New York Athletic Club. What can you tell us about the event? Well, it's great. Every year we have a big international event in New York City, all three international styles. Um, usually have a lot of different countries send people. It's a really good launch of the international season for a lot of our American wrestlers. Uh, but also this year, uh, the United World Wrestling has decided to uh, add a non-Olympic weight world championships. Um, this is new because it's going to have freestyle, Greco-Roman, and women's freestyle. Uh, in other years, they've done a non-Olympic weight, or actually a, a, an Olympic year uh, women's world championships, uh, because they only used to have four weights. But uh, now with every style having uh, six Olympic weights and two non-Olympic weights, uh, the world is going to get together in those non-Olympic weights and determine six new world champions. So uh, U.S. needs a team, and we're going to select it during this uh, tournament at the New York Athletic Club, and it should be some great wrestling. I, I think the U.S. is going to have a fantastic team, especially if the athletes who we expect to be in New York show up to try out. I'm looking at the lineup for men's freestyle, Gary, 61 and 70 kilos both, and, man, these are, are stacked weight classes. Yeah, this should be a lot of fun. I mean, um, you, you never know who's going to wrestle right after an Olympic Games. This event, you're, if you made the Olympics, you can't go uh, from any country. So um, if people were expecting that maybe some of our Olympians might slide around and, and go into a non-Olympic weight, they're not eligible. So these are people that didn't make their dreams happen at the Olympic trials. I'd like to start with 70 kilograms because we have a world medalist coming back there. Uh, James Green won a medal for us in Los Angeles. I mean, again, in, the, in Las Vegas in 2015 at the Worlds we hosted. And, uh, you know, he, he cut a lot of weight for the Olympic trials. This is his more natural weight. He's coming in with a lot of energy and, and looking to go back to the Worlds, win us another medal. But there's a lot of studs that want that spot. Uh, we anticipate guys like Jimmy Kennedy, who wrestled at uh, 65 at the trials, moving up. Um, uh, another a really talented guy in Jordan Oliver. Again, all these guys were in the hunt for an Olympic spot. Uh, national champ like Kellen Russell. Um, you know, the college, college scene, Isaiah Martinez, the two-time uh, NCAA champ from Illinois, and he hasn't signed up yet. But uh, if he does go, he, he's been competitive uh, at this weight class in freestyle at the university level. Um, and a number of other guys, Adam Hall, Nazar Kolchinski, um, Kevin Lavalley, Jason Chamberlain. These are just some of the names. Um, Jason Welch. Uh, Chase Pamia. These people have been competing uh, in the USA wrestling freestyle programs for a couple of quads now, and uh, a lot of talent, and really hard to handicap this weight class because it's so deep. 61, 61 is as well, and I'm looking for guys like Cody Brewer to not only show up but put on a show. Yeah, Brewer's, uh, you know, shown that he's competitive in freestyle since his college career has ended. He was an NCAA champ over at Oklahoma. Um, the big name people are talking about is Logan Steber, a four-time NCAA champ, junior world medalist. Uh, Steber wrestled at 65 in the trials. He's going weight he hasn't seen in a number of years. He's dropping in weight. Uh, he's been committed to this. He was talking about it months ago. Uh, he was the training partner at the Olympics for Frank Molinaro, and, and uh, he's been training really hard for this. Uh, he used to be lighter, but he got bigger over the years, and and this is an opportunity for him to go to the Worlds for the first time. B.J. Futrell, who's had a really talented freestyle career, looking for a first shot at a world championship. Um, this is his weight uh, prior to moving up for the Olympic trials. Uh, Tyler Graff, who is really a stud down at 57 kilograms, moving up a little bit in weight. He's big enough to make this transition. You spoke about uh, Cody Brewer. He's very much talked about it. He had a big uh, challenge match recently with, with uh, Tony Ramos that he won by Tech Fall. Um, you know, haven't seen a lot of him in freestyle, but he's got a great future, and he's, he's making a run at it. Um, people like uh, Josh Kindig, Kendrick Maple, um, even possibilities of Alan Waters is registered. He he wrestled at a lower weight and is moving up. Andrew Hochstrasser, who's been very talented at a 57 and at this weight class. Uh, so these are guys you're looking at. Uh, they're 
could possibly be someone out of the college ranks. Stevan Misic, who's uh, starting his freshman year here at Michigan. He's been a junior world medalist. Uh, he slots right in at this weight if he shows up. Uh, if you check track wrestling, they've got the people who've registered already. It's a small list. Usually they wait till the last minute to, to sign up. But um, this weight class has a lot of good buzz to it. Uh, some new talent. And then, you know, people really want to see if Steber can succeed by dropping the weight. We're talking about the Bill Farrell International and the U.S. Non-Olympic Weight Team Trial set for New York City at the New York Athletic Club, the famed New York Athletic Club, November 9th through the 12th. Gary Abbott has been our guest in the Nike Hot Seat from USA Wrestling. Gary, thank you very much. I'm glad to be there. And don't forget the Farrell International. We got at least 12 or 15 countries in the Olympic weights. That'll be great, too, not just the U.S. wrestle off. So I hope to see you guys in New York. All right, thanks, Gary. After the break, we have quick hits from around the college wrestling world. You're watching Global Wrestling News, powered by Yellow Blue Ecotech. The war raged for generations. No amount of bravery and conviction could end the infected, unyielding rage. And with every battle, the evil grew, changed, evolved. The warriors needed nothing short of a miracle to stop the infection, and a miracle they received. Your body is at war against skin infections and diseases each time you step onto the mat. Protect yourself against the invasion. Defense so defend what you have built. Right now, get any large original or flatbread Supreme Pizza for only $13.99. Casey's, famous for pizza. In this arena, you're either the hunter or the hunted. A hunter needs armor. Earn the right to be a Danmar warrior. Headgear, forged in the industrial north. For the toughest wrestlers of all ages. Born in the US of A. Work with us to make your custom headgear. Warriors take hits. For better breathing and vision, stay tough with the Warrior Face Guard. Dan Mock. Warriors need it. Warriors earn it. Welcome back, GWN fans. The question of whether Lou Rosella can recruit or not is settled. Just a few months into his role as head coach at Oklahoma, he's already landed Anthony Mantanola. Now, you may remember he was verbally committed to go to Iowa State just a month ago. So why the change? Soon as Iowa State, the staff, found out that Anthony was visiting Oklahoma, they pulled his, his scholarship offer. So by just going down there, I think that Iowa State was very, very frustrated, especially given after that verbal. i just kind of curious to see what changed because he knew that Lou was down there already before we verbaled. So something must have happened in a week span to where, hey, actually I want to go down to Oklahoma, talk to Lou. Obviously Lou sold him on, on point. I think Mantanona should fit in nicely for the Sooners at 74 or even 84 in the future. All right, more recruiting news out of Purdue now. Coach Erslin has pulled in another big name, Anthony Falbo from Connecticut, a three-time state champ there, a top 10 in the country by various national websites. Yeah, the Boilermakers are making noise in the Big Ten. Every two weeks, I feel like we're talking about Purdue. So big-time recruit for Coach Erslin. All right, EIWA recruiting news now. Brown Bears have landed A.J. Pedro out of New Hampshire. I know he wrestled in your event in Iowa City. Tony, what do you know about him? Uh, pa Pedro, I didn't know a whole lot about about him before we had him at our event but as soon as I saw him on campus as soon as I saw that workout I knew that he was going to be a steal because he's under the radar for a lot of people so Brown absolutely stole this kid he's going to make a ton of noise this upcoming season I, I think I mean, he needs to be I don't say he needs to be. He could have been in the Big Ten, Big 12, a big-time conference. So Brown absolutely got a steal. Well, the rich just get richer. Penn State landed the number one ranked recruit at 160. Brady Burge, no joke. How are they doing it? Yeah, I, li I like to see a spreadsheet of how they are getting this done, how they're spending their money. They have a stockpile of recruits up and down the lineup. They've got kids already on campus right now that are stockpiled. So to bring them in, this is just insane, and everybody – 
at the Penn State crew, the staff, they've just got to be grinning from ear to ear daily. I mean, lots of guys going to Penn State. Personally, I'll be heading to Cleveland for the All-Star Classic. After that, the NYAC for the Bill Farrell. Hope to see you back here next week for the show as well. For Tony Hager, Brad Johnson, and all of us, it's Global Wrestling News. Talk to you then.